Well, go on then. Turn it on. Hey! Is it what you wanted? Oh, Mum, it's perfect. <laughs> my name is Chloe Murdoch. I'm reporting live from my living room with my mad, beautiful, stupid family. <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a really appropriate venue because we're yeah. in like tunnels, so it links to the film, which is really cool. And yeah. I, I, do, I love the vibe that's going on here a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think it's so nice as well because, you know, we saw so many of the cast members that we haven't seen for, some of them for a good year and a half, which is, you know, yeah, crazy. Totally. Um, and just to, uh, you know, be able to see so many familiar faces, aside for a second, you're like... Union. Yeah, it's a reunion. reunion and, you know, it just, it's just really, really lovely to have everyone back together to see the film all together, so... While Stephen and I uh, had made my first film when I was 19, that we premiered at the BFI, and uh, after the success of that, and how we made, how we like managed to make that film, uh, we straight away said, you know what, we should totally go make something new, but we should step it up as much as we possibly can. And I'm a massive fan of the post kind of apocalyptic genre, as well as of course the sci-fi genre and alien invasion. And what was remarkable about the Darkest Dawn was. I felt like I had never seen this kind of merge of genres all in one piece. And I thought to myself, the, the concept of following a 16-year-old girl through a post-apocalyptic Britain caused by aliens sounds very appealing. So uh, as soon as Jesse kind of pitched that to me and, and I kind of brought my creative sensibilities to it, I thought, you know what, that sounds like a great project to be a, a part of. I like being in front of the camera and I've always, always wanted to act, like always, um, since as long as I can remember, to be honest, I've never really had the opportunity or the training to do it, um, so to have the opportunity sort of offered to me is an, a really great opportunity, I just snatched it and was like, yes, I would love to be a part of that. <laughs> Again, yeah, I was into theatre a lot and uh, I never really had the opportunity since college to act again. So when it came up, I was like, wow, you're trusting me with a role? Like a main character role? Okay, uh, no pressure. Uh, so, um, yeah, just a slight amount. Um, and yeah, and a genre that I, I didn't really know much about. Like, I, I watched The Walking Dead and that was about as much of an apartment. Yeah, yeah I, I hate horror. <laughs> yeah, for me to so, go into sort of like a sci-fi apocalyptic. Yeah. I mean, is it horror's genre? I see people keep saying horror. A little bit. I would say it's more it's like, like a thriller. thriller. A thriller, yeah. yeah. definitely. Even so, I don't watch those either because I'm, I'm a bit of a wimp. So to be a part of that was an incredible experience, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. Well, we met Drew when he was 18, so that was four years ago. And um, he was making videos on YouTube. He just made a web series. And uh, we could see how talented he was from what he'd done on the zero resources. I think it most he'd ever spent on anything before we met him was a tenner or something. Uh, but he'd achieved these extraordinary things and he'd made this, you know, amazing War of the Worlds bit, you know, he's, and he made the, I think he made the, what is still the most popular Harry Potter fan film. So anyway, he's clearly very talented and we invested a bit of money in him, which is what our company does, is invest in new talent. And we invested a little bit of money in, in him and he produced what we could see was, had the potential to be extraordinary. So we spent a bit more and turned that into his first feature film, which was Hungerford. Um, and that went down and won these awards, won the Best Horror Star Fight at Berlin Independent Film Festival, the actress won Best Actress at Porto. So it was just, for us, it was a complete dream come true, wasn't it? I mean, it was everything we'd hoped for from our company, you know, in our first project. So, you know, that was great. And, you know, and our policy is to carry on investing in talent we believe in. So we knew we wanted to do another film with Drew, and that's how it happened. Uh, I was having a meeting with uh, Wildseed about something else, and they mentioned that they were making a sequel to uh, Hungerford, the film they'd already made, um, and said, oh, you know, maybe you'd be interested in it, you know, it's you act, and I was like, no, oh, maybe, and they said, oh, it's by, a, uh, the original was by a 20-year-old director, and um, we'll send you the link, and I was like, 20-year-old director? I was starting to come up with excuses in my mind as to why I couldn't do it, you know. But they sent me the link, I watched it, and I was like, oh, well, that's, like, really damn good. Like, this is, I've seen a lot of fan footage films and low-budget horror in general in my life, and this really keeps it going. It's interest for the audience from start to end, great characters, it works nicely from one point A to point B, but also in a series of interesting vignettes, which I think is the best way to do fan footage, really. So I was like, yeah, okay, sign me up for the sequel, I'd love to be on board. I'm very glad I did, because frankly, what they've achieved for the budget is absolutely astonishing. To be honest, mate, I don't think I've got one straight answer for that. A lot of luck, 
lot of practice and uh, to be honest focus uh, just summoning as much focus as I could to um, you know harness this film we shot it in 12 days which is just unbelievable for a feature film let alone a feature film that looks like this and um, you know I I just gave it my best and at the end of the day that's all you can ever do so uh, constantly having conversations in my head with myself about visual effects because I'm kind of acting as my own visual effects supervisor and at the same time I have great support in terms of the performance side of things so I'd go to Jesse or go to Sarah Perugia our acting coach for performance notes so what was great is you know I had that support network around me to to be able to accomplish so many different jobs <laughs> oh my oh my that god so that's so many oh gosh uh pinpoint one quick think oh it was a long time ago but it we all became we all became a family like there's so many inside yeah. jokes that you have when you're spending that much time with someone on set yeah. and off set because we spent our chill out time afterwards together as well um but yeah i couldn't pinpoint one but it was an absolute experience and i would do it all over again we were all living in the same house together and in Goring they don't really have any supermarkets so trying to make a chicken korma from scratch which I was trying to impress everyone with it failed. failed but it still tasted good but I had to use half real ingredients half fake ingredients so it was a very pressuring time for me um, but yeah that was a good day yeah. you didn't even try it <laughs> you have to come run I'll make you proper chicken okay. korma with real ingredients <laughs> well we watched a lot of vlogs from a lot of vloggers and um, actually I, we watched a vlog that Bethan had done about being bullied and in that vlog she was brave enough because it is brave to do it there's lots of vloggers making everything look perfect and not many vloggers with the courage to look vulnerable so it was that it was that vulnerability really that we we saw and thought god if she can do that for us then we'll have something that people because people have to care at the end of the day or you're not doing anything it was Jesse's idea when he said to me back in 2014, he was like, you know what, dude, I reckon we should try and cast a few social talent in this. And at first I was like, that's a very interesting route to go. But then when you think about the nature of the film, and uh, Jesse sent me the link to Bethan, and uh, our musical Bethan, as she's known on YouTube, and Cherry Wallace. As soon as he kind of put me in contact with them, I was like, oh, wow, these guys are great. And I think we can get something very organic, very original from them. Very good. I always like working with other YouTubers. Frankly, I'm a bit disappointed I didn't get to meet some of the others. Well, because obviously they're in different scenes, so you don't. But um, I've met them both separately, and it's very nice. But it's always nice to meet people from the same industry. I think partially because it's so such a small one. And this, and again, you're looking at you know a small section of the population who's making money from YouTube, and there's even a smaller section of that who can act or perform in a traditional sense. So it's really nice to meet other people in that kind of wavelength. I think in the end we just thought that um, it was better to have a title. We called the first film Hungerford because that's Drew's hometown, that's where we shot the film, etc. And I think that when it came to the second film we just thought it would be better to have a title which, because we haven't got billions of dollars to call it something, something enigmatic and then force, the, like Cloverfield for example, spent so much money on that amazing image that they could afford to call it something which sort of didn't really conjure anything in anyone's mind. So I think we, in the end, we decided that it would be better to give the film a name that would, you know, conjure what sort of film people were going to get to watch the minute they saw the title. To be honest, the quality of the work. Um, we, throughout all the pre-production, throughout all the production, this was known as Hunger for Two. Uh, we set out to make a sequel, hence why we kind of followed the characters from the first film, but at the same time established new characters. And to be honest, by the end of post-production, we thought it was so strong that actually marketing it as a sequel didn't do it justice. It kind of stood alone in a, in a really kind of beautiful way. And we thought we might as well kind of follow kind of the essence of that and, and create it as a, as a separate entity. And the, the beautiful thing is, is I think it, if you come at this as a sequel, I think it works as a really good sequel. And at the same time, I actually think it works as a really good standalone film. And I'm really proud of that because I think that's, that's a really hard thing to achieve. By accident, I I started off on YouTube about, ten and a half years ago 
that's a frightening amount of time for YouTube. People don't even think the site's been around that long. Um, yeah, I uh, started doing comedy reviews of little bits and bobs um, on front of my dad's old sofa, and I've managed to turn it almost into an industry over um, a ten-year period. And it would have been three years ago now. Um, I've got some experience writing sketches and bits and bobs for the uh, BBC back in the day, and we wrote an entire feature film, uh, Ashens and the Quest of the Game Child, uh, with Riyad Barmania, who's the director and co-writer, who has far more um, experience in sort of long form than I had in the sketches. So we joined forces to make this entire film I starred in, and it went astonishingly well. Um, we're up to about 1.3 million views, I believe, on YouTube at the moment. We thought we'd have a success if we hit 100,000, so to hit 1.3 million, great. So yeah, from there on, I've just kept an eye out for interesting projects to act in. But, uh, to be honest, I do turn most of them down, but this one, there was so much heart in it, and you know, so much competency um, behind the scenes, that I couldn't turn it down, really. Oh man, so I first picked up a camera when I was about 12, 13 years old and started playing around with visual effects at the same time. And you can actually go onto my YouTube account, uh, Kermit Kassam, and still see me as a 13 year old playing around with visual effects. And it just became a great play tool. I just loved it. And, this, you know, I'm totally self-taught. I've, I've, I didn't go to film school. I've, I've kind of never been taught how to hold a camera or frame a shot or, or you know, how to composite a 747 crash into a neighborhood. Um, so the kind of the gratification and the, the self-gratification I get out of, out of those things that I see other directors and other massive budget films get, I get this weird personal kick out of going, yeah, I can do that. Again, like when I was younger, you know, obviously my channel's called Musical Bethan, so I've always had a, a massive interest in musical theatre. I think the last actual proper acting role I had was Rare in the Sound of Music, which was, I was 16 <laughs> in 2012, my high school production. Uh, and so acting was never a plan for me. I've always been a musician. Um, but I would, you know, I. I obviously wanted to take the opportunity because I, you know, I don't know who was going to trust me with this sort of thing again. It was never a plan for me, but yeah, that was um, something that happened, and it was lovely, really. Yeah, I mean, I've always, I've always been into creative things. Like art has always been my thing. I mean, I've dabbled in music before, so anything creative, including acting, um, I'm going to be drawn to that because it's just who I am. So. <laughs> That was our plan from the, from the get-go really, is that we knew that we wanted to work with this new generation of talent and we also knew that we wanted to work with a new generation of platforms. So uh, right from the beginning we thought to ourselves, well if theatrical distribution comes along we'll embrace that, but we're absolutely not going to wait for someone to uh, release our film theatrically, we're just going to distribute it ourselves. All of them, Netflix, Hulu, Wacky, Ubiquiti, Sony, um, Microsoft, Play, Amazon, iTunes. It goes on. <laughs> this guy's cool. Those, but by the way, those are all the platforms that you can find <laughs> The Darkest Dawn on. <laughs> uh, I mean, if I was offered more films, I would definitely do that. But at the moment, uh, continuing my YouTube channel with my makeup, which I've sort of rebranded my channel into that a little bit. It's going more heavily special effects makeup. Um, which, yeah, I like doing that kind of thing, so just keep swimming. Yeah, yeah what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah, I'm um, just continuing with presenting. Um, I'm writing a lot of music at the moment. And uh, like I said, yeah, with Cherry, the same. Uh, if the opportunity came up again to act, I would definitely take it if it was the right thing. Uh, and yeah, bring it on. <laughs> Next, a sequel to Ashens and the Quest of the Game Child, which I cannot yet reveal the title of, because it's in flux. Um, but yeah, we should be filming April next year. We can say it's a heist movie, a comedy heist. Oh.